Cody back here again with a uh, another Vinyl Finds video. The first uh, Vinyl Finds video I've had in a while, probably about a month or so. And one of the reasons why I've kind of been holding off to do uh, this for a while is not because I haven't had any records. I've been accumulating quite a bit of records, honestly, in the last month or so. But uh, one of the reasons is why because I ordered something on uh, Discogs in about a month ago, and I've been waiting for that to come in, and uh, it never came in. But uh, I contacted the seller and I did get a refund, uh, so apparently I'm going to guess I got lost in the mail, which kind of sucks, but uh, at least I got my money back. I kind of feel bad for the seller because he's out the money and the album, but he was uh, really uh, good about it, and if it does like some miracle way show up, I will definitely uh, resend him the money and PayPal for sure, but uh, I mean, it was an album I really wanted, so I'm kind of uh, crossing my fingers and hoping it somehow still shows up, but... Uh, uh, he can't find the tracking number for it. He lost the receipt, uh, but that kind of sucks too. So, I mean, I don't know why he didn't send it to me uh, from the time he actually sent it, but stuff happens. Uh, hopefully, I'll be on the lookout for that album again if it doesn't come and be able to add that and uh, maybe show it in the next video if I uh, do come across it for a good, a good deal again. But stuff like that happens. Nothing I can do about it. But uh, So, I uh, do have a, quite a few albums to show. Uh, despite that one not coming, I do do it. Do have a, uh, a pretty good variety of uh, albums from all different decades: 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, 90s, and uh, several. I went to several different stores within the last month. Uh, the first couple albums I'm going to show all came, but the first five albums I'm going to show all came from uh, the Vinyl Rescue Project, which is, which is the record store that's uh, pretty local to me. It's only about probably about seven or eight miles away. So I go there quite a bit, and uh, these are all from uh, numerous trips there within the last month. Uh, the first one I'm going to show here is the uh, Crazy World of Arthur Brown, and uh, Vinyl Rewind uh, showed this album in one of his recent uh, Vinyl Finds uh, videos, and uh, I love the song Fire, and I kind of forgot about this album until he showed about it, showed it on his video, which made me kind of want to buy the album and I didn't really go into the Vinyl Rescue Project necessarily looking for this album. I was just flipping through uh, the records and I came across it. Uh, great price. It's in great shape. Um, this is just a great psychedelic album. Uh, it came out in 1968 I think. But uh, just a great album and I'm definitely uh, happy to own that one. Then another album I got that same day I got that one is a uh, Japanese copy of The Bungles, Age of Plastic. I'm not the biggest fan of these guys. Uh, I really do enjoy the song Video Killed the Radio Star, which of course is the uh, first song and music video they played on MTV when it launched. Uh, but this is a, a Japanese copy. It's just in great shape. Uh, it has the uh, OBI strip on it. it. has all the inserts and everything. So uh, definitely cool to own that one though. And it was uh, not very expensive either. Then a couple more albums I got there. I probably got this about two weeks after I got those ones. Uh, Zagger and Evans, 2525. Uh, not, uh, I love the song in the year 2525. This is the reason why I got this album. I've had the 45 for that song for a long time. And I've actually not listened to this full album yet, but I am interested to see how it sounds. I just not, I haven't got around to it yet. But, uh, I mean, this is so cheap that just that song alone... I mean, I had to have it. I mean, I love that song so much. It's just a classic uh, 60s uh, song. Uh, came out in uh, 1969, I think. But, uh, great song, and the album's probably not much, can't be too bad. Then another album I got there is Warren Zevon, uh, Stand in the Fire, which is a live album uh, by Warren Zevon. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for Warren Zevon albums. I'm just a huge fan of Warren Zevon. Uh, and I really, I feel like it's kind of difficult to uh, come across them. I mean, they're not too expensive when you do come across them, but it seems like it is uh, kind of hard, at least where I'm from in Indiana. Uh, even going into, like, all these other record stores, I mean, finding original Warren Z bombs, uh, to me, seems kind of difficult. Uh, reissues, not, not too much, not too hard to find, but uh, definitely happy to have this one. Just a great, great live album recorded at the uh, Roxy, I believe. Yeah, at the Roxy. And then a, uh, another album I got at the Vinyl Rescue Project. I picked this one up last week, and it is the uh, Blues Traveler. 
the Blues Traveler uh, for their fourth album, obviously, but uh, probably one of my favorite Blues Traveler albums. I mean, of course, it's got that song Run Around on it, and it's got a uh, hook on it. It's just probably their two biggest songs. And I wanted this, and they actually just reissued uh, their first four albums on vinyl, I think like two or three of them for the first time ever. I know their first one was uh, issued originally uh, all of, like in the U.S. and the U.K. I think their second one was maybe only uh, issued in Europe originally. But they've reissued all their first four albums on vinyl. Uh, this one in particular for the first time ever. And I'm uh, definitely happy to have this one. And I was actually looking for this one when it came out. And the only place that uh, got any copies in was Luna Music. And I actually did go up there. I actually have some albums there to show uh, later on in this video. Actually, probably next after I show this one. But they only got one copy in and they sold it right away. And uh, I asked uh, the guy at Vinyl, the guy that owned Vinyl Rescue Project if he was going to get any in. He uh, didn't order any initially and he said he'd uh, see if he could get any. And he ordered one and he got it in like a day later. And it, not only was it, uh, did, not only did he get the album, he actually got the, uh, somehow managed to get the uh, limited edition uh, colored vinyl of this album, which is amazing. Uh, they only pressed 750 copies of this one, and uh, I was definitely psyched about this one. And this, uh, this particular copy originally came out, I think, in January, and uh, I never even uh, attempted to get this copy because I thought it was going to be too expensive and uh, just too hard to get, but... Uh, I guess I got lucky and waited, and he uh, ended up being able to get this one in. It's uh, number uh, 171. This is numbered on the back right there. It's number 171 out of uh, 750. Uh, just a great album, though, by the Blues Travelers. And now uh, some albums. Like I said, I did go to uh, Luna Music about a, two weeks ago now, coming up on two weeks ago. And I did pick up uh, three albums there. And, I mean, Luna Music's probably quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, record stores. I mean, this is only the second time I've been uh, there. But there's just so much uh, stuff. It's almost overwhelming. And there's a lot of uh, really great stuff, too. If there's uh, stuff that you have on your want list, uh, there's a pretty good chance that they'll have at least uh, a couple items on it. Because uh, there's a couple items that I had on my want list, and I got about two of them there, so... The prices on some stuff, it's... I mean, it's fair. It's about what you'd expect. It's probably about... Maybe a little bit below the Discogs average, but uh, not not too bad. Uh, but uh, you're not gonna find like an album that's going for you know forty or fifty dollars on Discogs for like ten dollars there. But uh, I did pick up the uh, Dave Matthews Band uh, reissue of Under the Table and Dreaming, which is the first time this has been issued on vinyl. And uh, they actually got this in early. I think I went there the Saturday before this was supposed to come out, and they had them in, in so I grabbed one. I had it a couple of days early, which is uh, kind of cool. Even though this album was originally supposed to come out in November, I think, I think there was an issue. I think they used the wrong masters or something on them. So they had to uh, recall all of them and re-make uh, them all. And it just came out uh, the same time that Blues Travelers uh, came out, which was uh, like a week ago. But uh, sounds fantastic. Uh, it's a 2LP set. It does come with a, uh, a digital download card. And the uh, download card does come with three unreleased studio outtakes of Granny, Dancing Nancy's, which is an acoustic version, and the song that Jane likes, which is an awesome acoustic version of that one. Uh, really good album, though. Uh, of course, it's his uh, first uh, studio album. It came out in 1994 originally. So I'm hoping that uh, that trend continues with him uh, reissuing his stuff. I did pick up two more albums there, uh, and uh, both of them were things that I had been wanting to get. The first one is the uh, Weezer Green album, and this is an original 2001 uh, pressing of it, and it is on the uh, green transparent vinyl. Which, I mean, I was just uh, absolutely ecstatic to find this there. I mean, it was actually, they have a, when you walk into uh, Luna Music, they have a uh, area of, like, new arrivals, which is kind of nice, because uh, if you go there pretty frequently, uh, you don't really, you can just go to the new arrivals and not having to uh, thumb through the, you know, the ABCDs and so on to see if they got anything uh, new in. And I was uh, looking through the new arrivals, and this was uh, there, so that probably wasn't there that long. And they got a pretty good deal on it, 
and definitely happy to uh, have that. Of course, Hash Pipe on, is on, on that album. Uh, Photograph, uh, Island in the Sun. It's just a great uh, Weezer album. I think it's their third one. And then another album. This is one that I've actually really been wanting and trying to find for a while, and it's uh, Smashing Pumpkins Gish, and this is an original uh, 1991 U.S. copy of it. And I mean, I was just uh, psyched to uh, find this there. Also a really good deal. It's in great shape. Uh, of course, I have the reissue, and the reissue does sound really good, but uh, I mean, I am a stickler. I want the original stuff. I want the first pressings, and now I have it. I'm pretty psyched that I was able to find it. And, uh, just a great, great shape, great album. Of course, Smashy Pumpkin's first uh, album. And, uh, did uh, go to Half Price Books as well. Uh, this is probably something I got about a week ago as well. And it's, uh, nothing too special, but it's the, uh, Flash Gordon soundtrack, uh, which is, most of the songs are done by Queen, so it's kind of essentially a Queen album. And this is one that I've been kind of looking for for a while. And I've uh, just never been able to come across it. And this one is in fantastic shape, uh, still with the shrink wrap, still with the original price sticker and uh, the Queen sticker on the front. Uh, I mean, I love Flash Gordon. I love that movie. It's just so it's like such a cheesy movie. It's so uh, it's just like one of those cheesy movies that you just can't help but to like. And I mean, it's kind of cool that uh, this movie is kind of featured in Ted and kind of gave it a resurgence of life. But uh, definitely psyched to find the soundtrack. Uh, nothing too special there though. And, uh, I did go to a, uh, another Half Price Books, and, uh, one that was pretty far away from me, and I actually didn't even know this Half Price Books was there. It's all the way up in Indianapolis on 86th Street, which is probably a good, like, almost an hour away from me. But, uh, my mom had uh, knee surgery not too long ago. She had to get knee replacement surgery, and she went up there, and she had kind of complications, so she had to go back up there this past week. And I was driving uh, up there, and I came across a couple records. I came across the Half Price Books and a Karma. So I, on my way back, I stopped in there to see if they had anything. And uh, they did have uh, quite a few things at this Half Price Books. And this Half Price Books is a lot different than the one I'm used to. Uh, it was kind of a lot bigger, more wide out and spread open. Uh, and the one that the one I usually go to is not small, but it's kind of more uh, compacted together. It's kind of like kind of a little bit smaller. Uh, they did have a lot more selection at this uh, Half Price Books, but their prices were a little bit on the iffy side. I mean, I don't get how they come up with some of their prices. Uh, a lot better prices than the one I usually go to, but I did uh, find this album there. It's Megadeth. Uh, Peace sells, but who's buying? Uh, I was really happy to find this. This is their second album. It's an original U.S. Uh, copy of it on the uh, Capitol label. Uh, still has the sleeve, the original uh, inner sleeve on it. In it. Uh, the album's in pretty good shape on the uh, Capitol label. Uh, some of the albums they had there, though, weren't, like, in the best of shape, and they kind of wanted quite a bit of money for some of their stuff. And the, actually, on this one in particular, they had this one hanging on the wall, and I didn't even realize, I mean, it was for sale. I thought it was just maybe the cover, and they were showing a display in it because they had it in a frame on the wall. And I asked them, and they said, hey, it is for sale, and they did, uh, were selling it with the uh, frame, which is the record frame here. Uh, I put another record in here. I actually framed my uh, Save the Turtles, which is autographed by uh, Mark Volman and Howard Kalin. Uh, figured I'd put that in there. And uh, this pretty much came with the Megadeth album. And uh, I never actually owned one of these frames before, but th this particular one fits the album really nice. It's really easy to uh, get the album in. It fits good. Uh, so I'll probably put this on the wall, on one of the walls somewhere. And it's kind of cool that I have a frame for this uh, album now, which is autographed, which is cool. Uh, a couple more albums to show, though. Uh, uh, on the same trip, uh, there was a Karma Records not far from that Half Price Books that I went to on uh, 86th Street. And I uh, went in there and really didn't see anything like you know, that I had to have. Uh, a lot of stuff in there was really honestly overpriced. Uh, they had uh, a lot of CDs, and uh, they did have a collection of vinyl uh, records. Uh, the U stuff, not too great. I will say this Karma Records was a lot better than the uh, one that is in Franklin, uh, which is really close to me. Uh, that one kind of kind of honestly sucks. Um, the prices are just ridiculous. They have a bunch of junk there, but 
Uh, this one isn't too bad. The prices are still kind of ridiculous, but I did find an album that I was looking for, and it is uh, Temple of the Dog, uh, the reissue on music for vinyl. This is an album that I've been wanting to get for a while, uh, an original or the music on vinyl. And I've heard uh, really good things about the music on vinyl issues, and uh, I've never owned one until this one. And this one sounds fantastic. I mean, it really is like audiophile sounding. And uh, it's just a great album. Uh, it's uh, on, pressed on three sides, and on the uh, last side there's actually a laser etching. If I can pull out the uh, right one. The laser actually looks pretty uh, pretty cool though. If you can see it in the camera, it uh, just says Temple of the Dog, laser etched on the uh, vinyl. I don't know, it's kind of hard to make out on the camera. But uh, pretty cool, uh, just a fantastic album of course, kind of like a tribute album to Andy Wood. It's pretty much uh, a Pearl Jam Soundgarden like hybrid album. Uh, just a great, uh, just a great album. Uh, I mean, definitely just like uh, Hunger Strike, a great song, Say Hello to Heaven. Uh, so really juiced to uh, be able to find that album though on uh, vinyl. I will say though, it was not, che it was not cheap, but uh, definitely sometimes I just had to pull the trigger on it. And uh, do you have a couple of Discogs items that did actually make it my way, though, that I am going to show. The first one being the uh, Soundgarden Super Unknown reissue, kind of a theme going off uh, the Tipple of the Dog album. And this is an album that I've been wanting to get since it's come out, the reissue anyway, but uh, it's always so expensive. Uh, it's like I know FYE, they have it uh, in stock right now, the one that is near me, and they've had it for a while, but they have, like, I think that's, like, $69.99 there, which is just crazy. And then, uh, Luna Music had it for $55, and then, uh, Indie CD and Vinyl, I've seen it there for, like, $80, so it's just, like, I don't get why this album's so expensive, but, uh, I got a really good deal on this one on Discogs. I paid, like, $20, I think, for it. Maybe a little bit more than that with, uh, shipping, but uh, just, it, I mean, it was brand new, still sealed, um, and there's really nothing too special about this album. I mean, it, it sounds really great. They, uh, they did a good job, uh, reissuing it, uh, remastering it. It's on 200, uh, gram audiophile vinyl, and, uh, uh, just, uh, just really, like, I don't know, go get why it was so expensive, though. I mean, it's just a regular 2LP set, uh. There does does come with like a little book there, but the book's like nothing too special. It's just more like liner notes and stuff. But there's a gatefold, the two LP set, of course. Uh, this album with a lot of uh, just classic Soundgarden uh, songs on here. Of course, Black Hole Sun, Spoon Man. Of course, the title track, Super Unknown. Just a great album, though. Definitely one that I wanted to have in my collection, but I was definitely not uh, wanting to pay uh, upwards of seventy dollars for it. I mean, I, I've, I was going to pay that much. I would have just probably splurged on an original one. And the uh, last album I'm going to show here is probably one that was definitely on my want list and probably near the top of it. And it's the uh, uh, Pearl Jam uh, 10. Uh, this is a first pressing U.S. copy of 10. Of course, I have the reissue uh, that came out. Uh, I think it came out in 2009, I want to say. I mean, I picked it up. I think like late last year maybe maybe earlier this year I can't even remember but uh, definitely wanted to have the original one now I have uh, Pearl Jim's first three albums in original form um, definitely this one sounds just uh, amazing it sounds so great I'm definitely happy to be able to pick that up it still has the original uh, sleeves and inserts in it uh, Definitely uh, psyched on that. Just in great shape too. I mean, wasn't I'm not gonna lie. This was not cheap, but I think I did get a pretty uh, fair deal on it. And uh, definitely happy to have it. But that is all the albums uh, that I had to show. Uh, hopefully this video wasn't too long, but uh, 
thanks again guys for uh, watching and uh, hopefully I'll have another video up soon and uh, maybe next time I do a video I'll have uh, the uh, album that I was supposed to get in the mail um, if not uh, that particular one maybe I'll find another uh, deal on the uh, one that I was looking for but uh, anyway that's all the albums I have definitely give all those two thumbs up thanks again guys uh, for watching